I think we are live. We are live. Yes, I can see that Shardy's here, so I'm definitely, we're definitely connected. That's good. Um, I'm just going to wait a second just to allow some more people to join, just to make sure that I've got, um, got it all connected. Technical aspects are not my, well, not generally creatives forte, really, technical stuff. Um, but we have to get used to all this filming ourselves and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, good. I think, yeah, we're good. We're live. So I've got people, um, we've got people on Facebook and Instagram and lots of people tuning in. That's really great. Um, okay, so uh, we've got uh, half an hour um, to just have a little chat, basically. And it's a great thing the King's Head Theatre are doing, offering an opportunity to keep creative, keep connected um, I think it's really important especially at this very very crazy times for us all as artists um, in all aspects of the industry it's it's tough so it's really important that we keep connected and keep inspired and if you know if there's anything uh, we can do to kind of bring inspiration and knowledge and um, push people forward then then you know it's it's these platforms are wonderful um so basically this is an opportunity for me to babble on about myself a little bit uh and just tell you a little bit about me and introduce myself talk about my career um a little bit not too much because i want to give you the opportunity to ask me anything you want to ask that um you may want to know that you wouldn't normally get a chance to um pick someone's brains about uh, the industry uh, and any aspects. So my name's Lee Knight, if you haven't uh, gathered that already. And I um, first became associated with the King's Head when I did Coming Clean. I played Tony in Kevin Elliott's beautiful play, Coming Clean. Um, and I think it was 2017. Uh, so we, we did a run at the King's Head to mark the 50th year of the partial decriminalisation of homosexuality in the UK. Um, it was a huge success, so we went to the West End, which was just amazing, transferred to the Trafalgar Studios, where we did another sellout run there. And then, again, it came back this year, before all of this craziness, we did another run in January. So, um, to again, it was to a sellout. It was just, just a wonderful... Very, very beautiful play, and I was just honoured to be part of something like that, something that was quite historic. So uh, that's how I'm affiliated with The King's Head, um, and I've done one of these Q&As before at the very beginning of lockdown, um, which people found quite useful, which is great. Um, so uh, a little bit more about me. I've got... Um, so I'm, a, I'm an actor... Um, I also write. Writing for me, I, I tend to write comedy. It's um, it's a thing I've been exploring in the last few years. It's important to kind of keep creative in any way you can, especially at times like this where I feel making your own work is really, really important. Um, and I am going to be. I've written a short piece called No More Donuts, which is going to be on at the White Bear Theatre in this new writing festival called uh, Shorts Festival. And I've just cast two wonderful actors. Um, it's a 15-minute comedy piece, and I'll be making my directing debut. So I'm really excited about that. So that's what's coming up. I'm going to start rehearsing that this month, because we're in October. Um, uh, so that, And I've got some TV stuff coming up. I've got a series called The North Water for BBC, um, which Colin Farrell and Jack O'Connell's in. It's a wonderful cast, directed by Andrew Hay. Um, that should be coming out this year. Um, do we have any questions at this point before I babble on too much? Uh, I will go into some kind of general stuff and if anyone feels they want to ask anything about what I'm talking about. But at this point, I'm going to ask any questions. Okay, nothing yet. I'll keep babbling on. Um, I've also got a film coming out called The Last Letter From Your Lover, which is based on a, a book by Jojo Moyes, um, which is coming out on Netflix this year. It's supposed to be out this summer, but I don't know if they've pushed it back. So I'm kind of 
dipping my toes in all aspects of things or trying to. It's a constant, constant, you know, up and down journey. Um, and what I've done through lockdown is I've created something called the Audition Room. Um, and that was formed, the kind of slogan is for actors, by actors. And I set the audition room up because when we went into lockdown, people that were auditioning for drama school um, and everyone actually suddenly were left thinking, how am I going to audition via self-tape? They'd never done it. Self-taping is a huge part of our industry now, huge. So I set the audition room up to coach people to be able to do their drama school auditions online um, and adapt and transition to that. So that's how it started. And now the audition room is pushing a bit further, becoming a hub where I, I'm getting leading working actors, which I'm really passionate about, who, te who teach and coach other actors at different points in their career, whether they're auditioning for drama school, whether they want to improve self-tapes, whether they want to uh, career guidance and mentoring. So I'm also offering a career guidance and mentoring for people at any point in their career. And it's the auditionroom.co.uk. So we've nearly sold out of our November course, which I designed at Drama Centre, which I'm now bringing to the audition room, which is a course where we're going to work weekly online, pr preparing people through the month for their auditions for drama school. And then I'm bringing on a panellist from a leading drama school who will do a mock audition with them. So they get the experience of what an audition would feel like for a drama school. So that's the audition room, um, and, I, and, it, I, and I'm, there's a blog, so there's interviews with drama school panellists, actors, directors. So the whole point is it's a bit of a hub, offering services, but also offering support and you know, guidance and classes to people that want to become actors or are actors. Any questions at this point? Any questions at all? I'm just kind of like looking at Facebook, making sure I'm not missing uh questions and then on instagram because like i said we're not meant to be technically minded ah i've got a question okay with a self tape what does a single take delivery mean and what are the best ways to achieve it a single take delivery i am at a sing i'm not sure actually what a single take i think i mean i think you mean if it's a one take and if it's a one take, then maybe it's a live audition. And if it's a live audition, then you're going to be working with someone live on Zoom, which I have done. So you just audition like this and you would have a director redirect you exactly as if you're in the room. Whereas a self tape where you would pre-record it, watch your tapes back. Don't do too many. That's the danger. We do them over and over again. But generally with self-tapes, I think your instincts, early instincts, are going to be the most truthful. Um, I hope that answers the question. Got another question um, <clears throat> from Susie. Thanks, Susie. I'm going to read it. So as much as things have been very difficult for theatre and the arts, I think it has refocused creatives and forced them to find new ways to make theatre. Would you agree that is a slip of goodness? Susie, I can't agree with you more. I mean, like you've hit the nail on the head. Like, I know it's difficult, it's, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty and it's tough. Personally, I think as actors, this is nothing new for us. Like, we always go through points in our career of immense trial and testing and periods of not working and periods of having to use our creative skills to come up with work and earn money. We are good at adapting, that's what we do. We have to find, use our natural skills we have as people, and we're people, people, very empathetic naturally, and we use those skills. So I personally think that it has been an amazing opportunity to reflect and slow down, knowing the whole industry. I made a joke the other day, I was saying to someone, look, even Kate Blanchett's out of work. May, that may not be true. But my point to that is, there's a, there's a, knowing that we're all in the same boat and we're all working, we're all sort of finding ways to create because the industry came to a standstill. It just, it offers a time for reflection that we wouldn't normally have. 
So I totally agree with that. And it's made me refocus. There's, there's, you know, it, 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 if work isn't being made enough, you have to create your own work. Or, or what you're going to do is sit and wait. You know, um, if, it, if it's something you've always wanted to do, you've always wanted to write or direct, do it. Now, now is the time. And now is the time where mediums are, over, are, are more relaxed because you can, you can, look, people are filming massive series on their cameras because it's, you can do that. You can do that. If the writing is there and you've got the, the actors, then there's no reason why you can't do that. So we're now pushing those boundaries as well. So it's opening up a whole other stream of, of work. Um, Susie, I agree. It's terrible, but it's, you know, it's, we have to be positive. What else can we do? Um, I've got a question from Liam. Um, have you found there have been more unique creative opportunities you wouldn't have had before lockdown, like the audition room during the period of COVID? Uh, yeah, I think, I think that, I mean, I, I actually, I should say I was very, very blessed because Basically, when we went into lockdown, I was actually, just before I was coaching a lot from London, and I'd always wanted to build the audition room, and I'd never allowed myself the time. So as soon as we went into lockdown, I worked on that website, I put all my energy on building it, and I was getting clients, and I was working, and doing something I love. So I completely transitioned um, to on. And I wouldn't have done that if we didn't go in lockdown. I would never have allowed that time. I, it's forced me to kind of focus. And I'm, if you're a writer and you're a creative, it has forced me into a room to focus on my writing, whereas normally you just fill your day. So, Liam, I think, um, yeah, I think there's more unique creative opportunities. You know, I'm about to direct, I've written my own piece, I'm about to direct it, we're going to rehearse it socially distance. If, if, that can't work for some reason, we're gonna move it online. And if we don't get to do the show because of whatever government announced, then I'll, I'll do it as a, I'll record it online and let people watch, watch it as a piece of recorded theater via Zoom. So I think there's a lot of opportunities that are coming out of this. It's really forcing us to really like question what theater is and what, where the boundaries lie and i'm excited i'm excited for when theaters reopen i'm excited to see what people will do because i want to see stories about lockdown i want to know how it's affected people um so yeah that's what i think the other thing is i'm very blessed because i also um some of you might have seen it there's a bt advert at the moment that's on bt broadband and um i shot that during lockdown with my real life partner and BT were looking for a diverse gay couple and we are and they looked for housemates and you know and people that could socially distance but anyway we we got that so I'm not sure we would have got that BT commercial if pre-covid because they specifically then decided they wanted to make the advert about this real couple so that I shot that in lockdown so that was an opportunity that sort of a blessing that came up for me um i hope that answers your question liam in a quite a long way um okay i've got another question do i offer any advice on good backgrounds lighting at home on a budget um i've actually got a light here so okay so first of all budget if you're doing a self tape um, and you're doing, or you're doing an, an interview or a meeting, or whatever you want, if you, you just need natural light. The best form of light is natural light. So sit in front of an open, bright window and have the light pouring in. You are never gonna get better, um, a better picture of yourself. Uh, background wise, you want a clear background. I wouldn't have that corner in the way normally. I'd put it like flat on like this, well, I wouldn't have that either. I would just make sure it's as clear as possible so you've always got all the attention comes straight on you when you shoot a self-take. Um, I've actually got a light here I'm going to show you. If you can see, well, Facebook people won't see it, but Instagram will. There is a light there, and that is something I use because it makes me look a little bit less tired. 
makes me look a bit better. Um, and that was very cheap, that light from Amazon. You can get them very cheap studio lights. And it's, I think that's amazing, especially when winter comes and there's no light. Um, any other questions coming in from anyone? Anything you like, whether it's about acting, acting career, self-taping, creating your own work, um, keeping creative, anything at all. Let's have a look. We've got quite a few people in, that's good. Uh, I'm just making sure I haven't missed any questions off because sometimes I do have a habit of doing that. Talking away and not... Um... So, yeah, if you, um, if you check out the audition room, um, if you're interested in it, if you're an actor uh, and you are uh, either auditioning for drama school or you want to have read information and tips from people within the industry that are working, then there's a blog on there. Um, I've just interviewed someone who does the RADA panels. I've auditioned someone who I coached that got into Lambda. So he's talking about his experience. Um, so do check it out. Um, it sort of should be a little hub for people who... Um, may want to go, go to dropping classes, things like that. Uh, a couple of questions um, from Jimmy. Do you have any advice on creating your demo reels for voiceover? Um, he says, sorry, I missed the beginning, so I don't know if this is an area you're covering. Listen, why not? Um, I have done voiceover stuff before. I haven't embarked on it. It's something I actually, it's something I actually really want to do. And I actually know someone who is kind of like, um, oh, she's the voice of something. She's the voice of, hang on, let me get this right. Oh God, she's the voice of some huge thing. And she's created a voiceover company that coaches people to do voiceover. And she's doing one next month. So Jimmy, what I'll do is, um, when this video finishes, I'll look up her details and I'll type it into the comments because she's amazing and um, my partner works with her and she's supposed to be like just brilliant so that's I'm going to do her like online workshop I did a demo reel once I went to a really bad person I it was not good I felt bullied I didn't feel comfortable she just wanted my money so if you're going to pay for a demo reel speak to people who have, who have just recently been to that person and make sure you do your homework because there's nothing worse than getting in a studio and just not feeling comfortable. Um, I've got another question. Uh, how many would be in a production bubble, for instance, lighting? How many roles are multitasked and how does lockdown affect this? Um, Simon, all I know is that... Um, when I did the commercial during lockdown, the, the same kind of amount of production was there, lighting everyone, but they were taking everyone's temperature on set. So even as the artists, like we had a couple that were back up in case during the shoot, one of us got ill and they had to not let us on set. So they would, we would have lost the job and they would have got someone else in. So I think they're allowing the same amount of production people, but um, they are just taking every precaution because otherwise the set would shut down. So masks on set, whenever you're rehearsing on set, you're wearing a mask um, and you can't take the mask off until you actually shoot. So you're literally like wearing the mask all the time and then when you shoot, you take it down. So it's intense, it's intense, but it's amazing that they're kind of working their way through it. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, so I know a lot of people that are filming, filming's happening around the world. There's a lot going on, but they're just, te I, aud I auditioned for a film and if I got it, I would have had to go to an island in Greece and quarantine 
for two weeks before they film, which is great because it means everyone's quarantining. If they can afford to do that, fantastic. Not everyone can, but it's great that people are taking the risk and making stuff because we need to work. Um, I've got another question. How do you juggle transition to getting auditions when you already have a full-time job and find it difficult to get out? Okay, this is an interesting question. How do you juggle transition to getting auditions when you already have a full-time job and find it difficult to get out? Um, the thing is, Jimmy, that's, really, that's a really important question. It's something a lot of actors or a lot of artists deal with. You do a lot of work that's low paid and a lot of work is hard to come by. So you have, so a lot of people do go and get, um, you do have to go and get work and sometimes people take on full-time jobs. The problem with a full-time job is you are, you are tied in. So you haven't got that flexibility. So what I did is I, during my career, I very early on out of drama school, trained in something that allowed me to manage my own time. Um, I still had a commitment. I still had a commitment to the people I would work with, the clients I was taking on. But I trained in a different skill, so I was able to work. As, so if an audition came in, I cleared my diary, and I was able to do that. When you've got a full-time job, you can't do that. So I'm not in that position but I know how hard it can be to have that job. Really, you need a job to have flexibility. And I'm not saying for a second, don't do the job or anything like that. I'm just saying it is going to be hard because you have people, casting directors will give you sometimes not even 24 hours notice. And you, you are expected to just go for it, to go to the audition and put it first. That's the problem. So there is a little bit of conflict there I understand. So finding something that creates flexibility for you is always going to be the best thing because the way the industry is, you have to drop everything and go for the meetings, especially early on in your career when you're establishing yourself. You have no sway, sadly. Whereas as you go through, you may have a bit more sway and say, listen, I'll put it on a tape. I can't make the meeting. But early on you really really have to commit go to the auditions and just show up it's just you know it's casting directors will just send those breakdowns out and you'll be expected to learn it go so um i hope that answers your question jimmy it's a difficult one especially if, you, if you're tied in and your boss isn't gonna play ball and i have been in those situations before where i've like run out at a lunch break run gone to an audition, ran back before anyone found out. I'd done that before. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps somewhat. It's a, it's a tricky one. The other thing is with this industry is we have to earn, we have to, we have to survive, okay? And you have to always be proud of that and not feel... There's this whole thing, a friend of mine who was a famous child actor who is still working now, doing great work, ended up getting a job in a cafe and the tabloid papers wrote this whole spread saying from this to this. And there was suddenly this shame around actors and creatives having other jobs. But you have to. You have to be proud of the other work you do, whatever it may be. And now more than ever, we've got people in the industry that were contracted on incredible jobs that are now working in supermarkets and are proud of it because they have to, because they didn't get any government help. So you've got to be proud of the other work you do. Sometimes it can become as big a part of your life as acting. And something I've learned is you have to be very careful because money is addictive. If you start working and you get used to money, it can be quite hard to give up. But as you get older and as you get more into your career, you will realise where your true passion lies. 
and you will start to really realise where you want to put more of your energy and time. And if it is in acting and writing and everything, you will sort of fall into that, that place and start really doing all the things you dreamed of doing and just make sure you earn enough to live and anything else is a bonus. Because if you just work too much and focus on the money side, you're possibly going to neglect your acting. And there are a lot of opportunities that are low paid or unpaid that sometimes we have to do because we love it and we do it for the love and also it gets a scene. So there is a small element where we have to take that very low paid stuff if we can afford to do it. Um, any other questions? We've got a few minutes left. I'm babbling on. Hope it's useful. Um, so any questions at all? Don't be shy. Anything at all. We've got about three more minutes and you can ask me anything you like within reason. Um, let me just see if I've missed any. Yeah, Jimmy, maybe. <laughs> I'm not saying find a more flexible job, but just, yeah, I'm just answering your question in that sense of it's a tough one. You know, if you don't have the flexibility, you're going to be, you're going to be um, a little bit stuck at times. I've got a question on Instagram. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Liam has asked me. Ah, oh, here we go. This is quite a big one. So feel free to give a short answer or a long one. But is what is acting to you? Liam, that is an amazing question. It's difficult, but it's an amazing question. Um, what is acting to me? I think that acting is... Uh, is, of course you've heard the saying that we hold up a mirror to society, but actors often go out and speak about politics and about life, and people would always criticise and say, who are they to talk about politics and life issues? And I thought to myself, hang on, isn't that what we do? Isn't acting holding a mirror up to society aren't we storytellers aren't we the people that have to empathize with every type of person because we have to play them and if we're going to play those characters we have to research empathize understand to such a ridiculous degree in order that we can then tell these stories um so that's a really hard question of what is acting for me, but acting is, um, it's a, it's a, it changes society and it is political. We tell stories that we're passionate about and there's a reason why we're passionate about them. You read some scripts and they don't necessarily trigger something within you as much as other scripts do. So for me at the moment, acting is one way that we can deal with what's going on in the world. It is the one way we can have a voice and make change and fight for the awfulness that's going on in the world at the moment. It's, it's so, that's where I'm at with it. It's a political game changer for me. It's an opportunity to have a platform because it gives voices to characters that are um, that don't always have a voice or have have a, enough of a voice. Um, I hope that answers the question somewhat. It's a very long discussion and an interesting one. So feel free to message me and we can have more of that chat. Um, just one more question before we go because we're about to finish. 
Um, how long into your acting did you find your writing voice? Um, Simon, I uh, actually didn't write for a long time. I was really trying to write more and more and more. And there was something in me that... I was sorry, I was acting more and more. There was something in me that wanted to write. I always put it to the on the back burner. And I think it just takes one thing to for you to do it and, and trust that there's a voice there. And that happened l longer into my career. So actually, in the, only in the sort of stuff last three or four years I started writing and dabbling in writing and realising there was a writer there. It's very hard for us to kind of suddenly go, oh, I'm a writer and, you know, we have to have, um, we have to have people tell, we want to have people tell us, oh, no, you've got something there, you've got something that's, there's a voice in you, you can write. And a few of those things happened for me. Uh, a comedy script I wrote got to the final for, or the semi-final for BBC Comedy Writers Room and that for me was... A, a way of me going, God, okay, I can, I can write. So it's never too late. It doesn't matter where you are in your career, ever, 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 ever. It's never too late to do what you love. On that note, I think we're done because it's gone half past, but um, I think I've answered everything. I think, yes. To everyone who's waved, sorry that I didn't wave back. I, I can't, it's too, it's, the multitasking is too much for me. <laughs> but um, uh, thank you, Simon. That's really sweet. Your message is really sweet. And um, if anyone wants to message me or go on the audition room, it's www.theauditionroom.co.uk. Please subscribe, check it out, ask me anything. My email's on there. Get in touch. Um, I'd be happy to have a chat with anyone who needs advice. Um, Oh, great. Um, someone's writing a sitcom too. Great, Benji. Well, drop me a message and if you need any advice, if there's anything I can give, you know. Um, thanks for tuning in, Leon. We have Leon Fleming, who is just one of the most wonderful, wonderful writers. I did a play of his. We're lucky to have him here. <laughs> so hi, Leon. Um, bless, bless you for tuning in. Thanks, Susie. Thank you, everyone. Simon, Jimmy, Ben, thank you for all your amazing questions. Um, the King's Head are doing wonderful, wonderful things. So just keep tuning in and checking out because, um, yeah, they're always doing... It amazes me that they're always doing incredible stuff. God, God knows what's going to happen when they reopen and put some serious shows on. Uh, all right, I'm going to log out now. Bye, everyone. Thanks again. Bye.